John Beck here, BeckFlintlocks.com. I just got back from Kempton. I did pick up a few items that I wanted to share with you today and do an online review. So I hope you enjoy it and we can discuss the items in front of it. Okay, so to discuss these items, the first item I wanna talk about is the powder horn with the applied tip that was made by 18th century artisan Adam Dobb. This horn is absolutely stellar. It's one of the reasons I bought it. When I saw it, uh, the color, the patina, just the care and attention that Adam took when making it. The, uh, you know, the ebony tip, it fits nice and snug. It's not gonna come out. Um, I've lost a couple of these on horns where they were just too loose. Um, they weren't made correctly, but this is so tight and snug. Um, one of the things I really love about it is just the lines of this horn, and he really picked a nice horn. It, it really fits well for my body. It's going to carry well. It just wraps around the uh, curves of my torso. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful piece. And, you know, when I think of powder horns, one of the things you notice in original horns like this horn here is they're very light. They're nimble. Um, if I take a flashlight, up to this, I can see the light coming through the horn because they shave the horn down because it's unnecessary material and they really wanna make it as light as possible and that helps with carrying it. The other added benefit is if you hold it up to the sun, you can see how much powder is actually in your horn. And when I, when I look at Adam's horn here and I put my light to it, I can see the light coming through this thing. Uh, if you can see that, it's, it's just an absolutely uh, must have thing on a horn. Um, one thing I noticed walking around the horns at Kempton is some of the horns that were being sold, I mean, they felt like bricks to me. Um, they were very thick. You could tell that the horn hasn't been shaved down near as close as where it should be. And Adam's doing things correct. He's keeping with the period and, you know, he's listening to the right people and it reflects in his work. Um, the next thing I would like to show is also from Adam. It's this handmade leather sheath for this coffin handle bowie. It features two brass rivets, hand stitching along the seam here. It's, it's a really nice piece. It's nice and flexible. It fits the knife perfectly, and it's really gonna look good on my kit. The knife itself was hand forged by Adam. It features Adam Dobbs' signature here, as well as my name inscribed on a silver plate. Adam has a unique style. It's what I really love about 18th century arms is he really puts his heart and soul into his work. And for him, it's not about machine manufacturing and perfect precision. Adam really speaks to rugged individualism and, and that idea of strength and, and beauty, which really was the epicenter of American work early on. And, you know, his work really speaks to that. It's, it's handmade, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. And you know, it absolutely does look amazing. This thing's so sharp that I can shave with it. I'll show you in a little bit. Now I got a bold spot. The next thing we're gonna talk about is 18th century Adam Dobbs leather conditioning using natural homemade ingredients. This stuff here, like if you put it on leather, the leather just absorbs it in. It conditions the leather. It really makes it more pliable while protecting it from sun and dry rot. Um, I have a belt that I've really enjoyed for a while. And you know, part of wearing a belt for several years is sometimes they start to dry out and the leather can crack and break from that. This will absolutely protect that from happening and it works extremely well. I, I use the product frequently. Sometimes it even ends up uh, being used on rifles that I'm working on. So I, I really do um, recommend his 18th century leather conditioning. Um, it has various uses from being, put, you know, here at Beck Flintlocks, I've been told that it's unprofessional to drink while doing a review or being intoxicated. Um, you know, my mind just thinks back to the American Revolution, that this country was founded in tavern, and you know, the documents and the founding of this country came out of places like Tun Tavern. So in that, let's do a little bourbon review.
So if you want to know what Beck Flintlocks is drinking, we got some Jack Daniels single barrel, some Blantons, some Rip Van Winkle, some Caribou Crossing, some Eagle, and some Jim Beam. I think tonight I'm going to try some of this uh, Blantons. Um, it is one of my favorite bourbons. And, you know, it's much cheaper than, say, the Rip Van Winkle. Um, you know, people, you know, sometimes I had some comments on YouTube saying, oh, you know, it, how hoity-toity of you to show your bourbon collection. Look, I'm an average Joe and, you know, I'm blue-collar, middle-class American. But I think if you truly appreciate something and you value it, um, you will get your hands on it. I've spent a lot of money on bourbons in the past and, you know, it's just like the items here that I have that are handcrafted. If you value something, you will take the time to work hard to earn the right. So if I want to drink $1,500 bourbon or $300 bourbon, that's my prerogative. Cheers.